Now that we've dealt with white, pink, and blue diamonds, or oh wait, that's wrong. White, pink, and blue, why the change? Well, as TMT's RCCLBY pointed out on FT Lapis, if the diamond on the left of the mural is truly a godlike entity being worshipped and being royalty, it would make sense that she'd be put in a sort of burial pyramid, albeit an inverted one. This also goes with her more triangular theme and doesn't violate the fact that it's in the battlefield because war, at least in ancient times, would have pauses so that both sides could collect and bury their dead. So everyone give a hand to TMT, like his comments, sub to his channel, whatever you do, so long as you DO IT! Okay, now with that done, it's high time we get on to YELLOW! What? Oh, what's the, where's the picture of Yellow Diamond? <laughs> Alright, okay, now you're just messing with me. Wait. What? Who did this? I. It's confirmed? Ah! <laughs> Yellow Diamond. There, that's better. Oh, come on! Why are you. What the hell do you mean I have to give fair representation of both theories? But I. <sighs> Fine. While I wanted to save the story of the Cannon Diamond for later, in the essence of time, I'm gonna do it in this video before I'm inevitably proven wrong. The first half of this video will focus on Yellow Diamond as though she is still in her fused mural form, as this includes most of her history anyway. The confirmed Yellow Diamond will be talked about afterwards, but keep in mind that there may be some missing information in the form of a video that will be aired after this one. Well, put up after this one. So I'll give you a few more seconds to click on an annotation for whichever diamond you want to start from, as well as the explanation video I'll base my thoughts on the Canon Diamond for whenever that's up. So, let's talk about Yellow Diamond before the Rebellion. What was all of that like? Well, we can infer that there were four quote-unquote leaders to the gem species, at least on Homeworld. Although it's unsure as to what the actual power structure was like. We don't know if they had different roles, or if one was higher than the others. We also know that the gems may be perceived as people, or just as tools, as we've seen with Lapis's mirror, some of the corrupted gems, and on some of the homeworld ships they can be seen to be literally power sources. Kind of a morbid way to think about your still conscious peers, isn't it? Finally, there's also the issue of fusions implied by Jasper. Fusion may be a controversial topic as it allows low-ranking gems access to exponential increases in power, most clearly seen when you look at Tugalite. Not to mention cluster experiments being analogous to reanimating the dead for, again, tools of war. So gems have a pretty grim dark existence when you think about it, and when you also put in that Yellow Diamond has probably witnessed the deaths of two of her sisters, and the betrayal of her entire race by the third, and being the only known leader left of an entire species of people, Yellow's had it pretty damn rough in the past couple thousand years. You, uh... You okay there, Yellow? You, uh... You, you feeling alright? On top of all the trauma that she endured through the Rebellion, the already morbid state of affairs for Gems, and having to be a world leader for the past 6,000 years, she's gone flat out mad. Let's recap a bit. Diamonds are fusion entities, and our only candidates of a diamond pair are Rose and Lion. But... Lion was hidden from the Crystal Gems for a millennia. Why is that? Well, what you're looking at right now is Lion's original design. A very creepy looking Cheshire cat design, and not only that, but apparently in the notes, Lion was to constantly follow Steven around with his eyes and why Cheshire smile, doing nothing else, just being really frickin' creepy. Remember that we believe Lion is the diamond half of the pink diamond fusion and that Rose kept this thing hidden from everyone. But this never made it off the cutting room floor. So okay, fine, we can poo-poo it for now, it doesn't mean anything. But we do have proof of Yellow's insanity from within the story. Connie and Steven have had a couple episodes revolving around the Spirit Morph Saga, a story which revolves around the protagonist, Lisa, and her familiar creature as they go on an adventure to find and save her father. This book series is listed as being most similar into our real-world His Dark Materials series. It follows a very similar structure of a girl and her familiar creature going on a large-scale adventure. What is most notable, though, is the villain of the series, the Authority. In the series, the Authority is guided by the Angels, who take a tyrannical rule upon mankind and claim themselves to be literally God. 
They are formed with a substance called dust, their source of power, but have labeled dust as being the original sin, and they forbid anyone else from acquiring it or at least limiting it as much as possible. The angel Metatron is the final antagonist who tries to take all of the power for himself and blatantly destroy any that would rebel against him. Dust, fusion, angels, diamonds. Is any of this starting to sound a little bit, um, familiar? Oh, but it's a reference to another story, and even then it may not be, we don't really know, and it's still just another story and has nothing to do with Steven Universe. Fine. Even then, though, there's still the widely accepted view that just being fused for too long is bad for your mental state. Once again, we see this in Sugalite and Malachite. But if all of this still doesn't convince you, we have confirmation from our theorist informant in the show. Remember, kids. Ronaldo was right. In Sadie's song, we see him right before he presents before Beach City, and on his blackboard, a person plus the diamond symbol equals a crazy diamond person. Or what we can infer from this is that fusing with the diamonds erodes one's sanity and corrupts the person that fused with them. And this is coming from Ronaldo, who has been right about everything so far, from the Diamond Authority, to Steven being pregnant and that he's harboring his mom's life force within himself, and he's even right about the <sighs> Anywho, Yellow Diamond is nuts, downright crazy, a mad monarch who is now oppressing the gems, and is far beyond the line of reason or hope for anyone. Someone who hates fusion, and love, and no! That's not true! No more lies! This is the truth! No, 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 I can't die like this. Not when I'm so close. And not at the hands of a filthy bandit! The warrior was practically a god! How? How in the hell have you killed my warrior? See, I could have saved this planet. See, I, I could have actually restored order, and I wasn't supposed to die by the hands of a child-killing psychopath! See, you're a savage! You're a maniac! You are a bandit, and I am the goddamn hero! There's actually a damn good reason that the gems came to this world. Yes, we would have suffered greatly as humans, and yes, they aren't the nicest or even morally right. But what's really at stake here? You'll find out soon. So, uh, given that there's still several minutes left in the video, it's, uh, it's time to make that awkward transition to Cannon Diamond. Even though this was meant to be, uh, like, uh, uh, two two videos from now. Yeesh! This episode schedule hates me. Making this transition as smooth as possible, however, without giving away the next video, there are three possible ideas of just who this post-war Yellow Diamond is and what she's like. Whatever has happened since the rebellion. Our first idea is a throwback to FT Lapis, in which for Lapis to travel to homeworld at faster than light speed, the resulting forces would cause her to go 1000 years back in time. It's possible that the yellow diamond we're due to see is actually from our year 3000. Something may have happened to homeworld forcing her to escape to the only known location left of surviving gems, even though we're technically her enemies. It's important to note that this yellow diamond could actually be the very same one in the mural, well, half of her anyway. So for her to arrive in this fashion would imply that something major has happened to her other half as well, and that there's a bigger enemy out there. This interpretation of Yellow Diamond would be of someone coming to give a dire warning of what's to come. The other ideas are based heavily in another commenter from FT Lapis. Man, you guys are really stealing my spotlight today! Ruby Moon. Ruby theorized the idea that Lapis Lazuli and Sapphire are both equally Blue Diamond, and here's why. The Diamonds should know that despite their godlike abilities and high positions, it would be foolish to assume that they'd live forever. As such, they need to ensure that should death ever come to them, they have specially grown heirs to replace them and keep order in society. The gem hierarchy then would consist of commoners and other specific classes, commoners being Ruby and Amethyst, or servants like Peridot and Pearl. Royalty would be Lapis, Rose, and Sapphire. Their general behavior and design would also support this. 
Also, it adds an interesting layer to the Gem Rebellion. While protecting humanity probably wasn't on everyone's minds, Fusion was definitely a big issue, as hinted to by Garnet in the extended intro. Sapphire and Ruby's relationship could have been the spark that caused the war in the first place, with having a royal heir fall in love with a lowly commoner, throwing the entire chain of command out of whack. So, where does this canon Yellow Diamond fit in? It's that she's inherently different from the Yellow Diamond and the Mural, literally a different person. This would naturally imply that something happened to our mural Yellow Diamond who somehow died during or since the war. She would have little or no recollection of who the Crystal Gems even are, at least not from personal experience, and would basically treat the whole situation like regular business. Or, a much more interesting third scenario. What if both diamonds coexist simultaneously? What if Steven and the Crystal Gems were to say, hit the diamond. If we accept that there's multiple heirs to the diamonds being created, then what's to say that an heir of Yellow Diamond is just casually strolling along Earth right now as we speak? Remember, literal diamonds are formed at intense heat pressures far beneath the surface of Earth. This Yellow Diamond could be completely severed from any contact with other gems, possibly from anyone else at all being born long after the war, much like Amethyst, except this is a Amethyst who never got to meet anyone. Sadly though, very little of these ideas come from solid evidence in the show or other canon. All we know is that the underground holds some significance to the series, as illustrated by one of Ronaldo's posts on Keep Beach City Weird, describing the homeworld spaceship hollowing out the Earth and stealing it back to its star system. While I look into this a bit in the next video, it's still one of the most vague things he's done, which I can't really seem to figure out what this means. Also in the comics, there's still the mysterious heavy sphere gems that were mentioned. Once again, I'll get to that in another video. In general, having this second yellow diamond implies that there is a lot more going on in the series than we can even reliably guess at, so really, we just have to wait and see. For now though, we'll have to think more about what the worlds of these diamonds might be like. And thank you for watching.